the promise of salvation continues in verses 71 and 72, that he delivers us from our enemies and from those that hate us. And so basically, most people go through life, and, and what it says in verse 71, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all those who hate us. Verse 72, to perform the mercy promised and to remember his holy covenant. What Jesus said is, I will end your anxiety, your anxiousness. You will never be anxious and troubled again. Why? Because only Jesus can save anyone, anywhere, anytime from whatever they're facing. Now you say, wait a minute. That means you get saved, you don't have car accidents? No, it doesn't mean that. Does it mean you never get cancer? No, it doesn't mean that. It means that we don't have to worry about that. You see, anxiety means you know how to meditate. Meditation is a sharp mind that can think deeply on things. A person who is anxious thinks deeply in the wrong direction. They're thinking about their problems, both real and potential. And they, they spend all their computing power thinking about how all this might happen anxiously rather than, and if you remember when we were talking about this before, allowing the attributes of God, his omnipotence, his omnipresence, and his omniscience and his love to surround every event in life. And, and if he is omnipotent, it can't get to it, to us. If he's omniscient, uh, we never, come on, this machine that I don't know how to operate. There we go. If he's omnipotent, it can't get to us. If he's omniscient, he knew about it before it happened. And if he is omnipresent, he's there with us. And he loves us so much. So every, everything that happens in our life, we don't have to be anxious about. Rather, we can say, Lord, you sent this. You allowed this. You have brought this to me. And I want to know what you want me to do. See, God, God is interested in our response to all these things that come into our life. Rather than us fearing our enemies, fearing those who hate us, we have to say, Lord, I have already know that you have commanded us to love our enemies. And love is not an emotion, it's a choice. So we are supposed to love the enemies. Did you know that the Roman Empire totally was filled with, with a hatred of the the, the Christians uh, being completely exclusive, that there was only one God and there was only one way, and the Roman Empire hated that. They liked this, this idea of pantheon, of many, all gods were kind of like allowed, but not one God. And the exclusivity of Christianity caused them to have many enemies, and the Lord said, love your enemies, sacrifice for them, do good to those that despitefully use you. And that ends our anxiety. Uh, another thing about it is the, the fact of the Lord's presence with us, his, his omnipresence being with us in this, that he gives us the power when we focus our mind instead of downward on, on our problems and our enemies and hatreds. But that's why Paul says, set your minds on things above. Focus on the one who made these promises, and he will and your anxiety and your fear. Look at verse 74. It says, And to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. He delivers us from our fears. That's why he says, fear not. Fear is the absence of faith. Fear is the absence of realizing that God is working all things together for his good, that God is the one that could stop whatever is, is happening. That, that is out of our control, it's still under his control. And so we are delivered. He ends our fearfulness, so we don't have to be fearful and afraid again. Uh, he can deliver anyone, anywhere, at any time from fear.